Okay, Eric, in our, in our last segment, we were focusing, or you were focusing, I should say, mostly on the, uh, on the, on the handheld force gauge, right? That's correct, the okay. DFC. The DFC, right. And now we've got a test stand in front of us. Uh, uh, what I see here is a, what, a uh, motorized test stand, looks like a load cell, and then some smarts, a little tablet over here off to the side, right? Correct, this is our L1 system. Okay. So you can tell it by the, the load cell and the tablet being the DRO. Okay. So very, very easy setup system. Again, it's one of three different configurations that you can do with the FMM. Again, stand only or you can do it with the DFC, okay. control in the stand, or the L1 system that we have here. All right, uh, looks like a very simple uh, uh, operator panel. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty simple. That, like two, two, I say two buttons and a knob. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and I mean, an emergency up, switch. <laughs> up, down, and set your speed. Uh, okay. So you can set your speed literally by dialing in what you want, and that's in inches a minute. If you want millimeters a minute, press and hold, okay. and they, that comes up. Now, when you're in the L1 configuration, or the DFC, no matter what speed you have dialed in here, either the gauge will override it, and it because the gauge is controlling the stand, or the software will okay. tell it to do So whatever. this is strictly if you're running in manual, manual mode, mode, you don't have anything else hooked up to it, you're just gonna manually uh, Correct. M move the stage yourself. And I guess also in manual mode, you've got, uh, you've got a scale off here, a distance scale off to the side. Yeah, that's okay. pretty much how you, you, <laughs> you measure how far you went with the little scale on here. Okay. Uh, in the other two modes, you know, we've got the encoder on the inside, so, the gauge reads the feedback from the encoder or the L1 software does as well. So that's how it, it judges speed and distance and everything. Okay, uh, tell us a little bit about this plate down here. Well, everyone likes options to mount stuff. So we have four different hole mounting options down here from M4, M6, M10, or an M12. And if you notice, we have the little wall out holes here to allow you to move it around so that you can keep everything in perfect alignment. Okay. On an S-beam load cell or the force gauge, you wanna make sure that your load's going straight through and doesn't have offset loading. Right. Uh, otherwise you'd get uh, inaccurate readings? Uh, it could damage your load cell. Oh, could <laughs> or that. Okay. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> a bad part, so you don't want to do that. Right, okay. So. Uh, and I should say that the software interface is pretty much as simple as the as the panel interface. Yeah, well, you, well last time we were here, we talked about the L2 software. Well, right. this is a simplified version of L2, Okay. being L1. So when you look at the software, it, it's pretty simple. You have the, your load and your distance uh, on the DRO. Okay. And under where it says test, you have your test that you wrote before. Okay. So you can select from any one of those. Or we can create a new test. Okay. Uh, so let's, let's do that. Okay. So let's hit the it. icon with the star at the bottom. Okay. That one there. And if you noticed, you have four different uh, test choices. Yep. Load test, distance test, brake test, and cycle test. Let's do a distance test real quick. Okay. All right. Now, if you notice when it comes up, you get two choices, either tension or compression. Obviously, we're set up for the tension okay. aspect of this. So Got a rubber like band on there. Yeah, right. only the finest. And let's go ahead and do a target distance, say four inches. All right. And let's do a speed of 20 inches a minute. 20 inches a minute. Okay, I'm just, just following your lead here. 20 inches, oops, 20. There we go. Okay. All right. So next we want to do is we want to go to pre-test. That's up there. Yeah, click that. All right. Okay. Any standard instrument, you want to make sure it's zeroed out. So let's zero load, zero distance. Okay. And if you go to where it says setting, all the way at the top. Oh, right. We want to go where it says set home. Then all we're doing here is just saying, hey, remember where you're at. Set so home. set home, yes. Okay. Now if you go to the bottom icon all and right. click that. The little uh, uh -huh. arrow? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And now you want to go ahead and return home. Uh, return home? Yes. Uh, yes, okay. Now hit the green check mark twice. Okay, check one, do again, okay. We want to save it, obviously. Save it. Oh, okay. Save it, whatever number it comes up, let's okay. just hit done. But I could type anything I wanted you in You can there. go back okay. and rename it anytime. Okay. So right, that's when, it. It, when it comes up, let's just hit start test. All right, we'll do it. That easy. That's pretty that straightforward. Easy. Even I can do it. All right. <laughs> so as you can see on the screen here, the test is running. You're getting your data as it's coming up. Right. You can see it's stretching out that rubber band there. Yeah. So it's going to return because that's what you told it to do. So it's okay. returning home. And if you don't mind, when it gets done, go ahead and hit start test one more time for me, okay? Okay. Uh, start test over here. All right. Okay, now it's... Perfect. 
and right. when it comes back to home, this time here, if you don't mind, touch the number, the run number one. Okay. For me. Now I'm assuming also as it's taking data, you could set limits. And Correct. It could tell you whether it was within limits or outside of limits. Okay. Correct. Yes. So press the one button. Uh huh. So now you'll notice there's the two runs oh, okay. that we just did overlaid. Okay. And uh, to your to your point about limits, the data that's on the side would go red. The numbers would go red if it fell out of whatever okay. limits that you set. And it with each run, I could keep overlaying multiple runs. As many runs times it, as you want. And you could do stuff like uh, uh, average the runs and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, various operations on it. Okay. Very very simple. Okay. Um, so that's that's all there is to it. That's all there is to programming it. Okay. That is it. Okay, so and you very would just easy to use. you would just change your load cell based on the different uh, load capacities that you're trying to run. Okay. I mean, you want to make sure you stay within okay. not a real big load cell. And um, the calibration information for load cell is stored in the chip in the back. Okay, so, so when when the, when the load cell hooks up to the to the device, play. it, plug it and knows play. everything about it. Okay, yep, and you're ready right. to go. Okay, oh, that seems pretty straightforward. Run through us again the, uh, the different sizes uh, of the frames. Well, we have three different standard sizes, the 110, the 330, and the 550, and we have extended column or travel, which is the 110X, 330X, and the 550X. Okay, terrific. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you.